Anyway, I know a lot of them youngsters down here in Brixton, and their trouble is frustration. Yes, you see, modern society has denied them the birthright of a war. Oh, I don't believe you. You saying wars are birthright? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. For century after century, you see, every generation of British youth has been guaranteed a decent war. But that sort of, you know, raw, eh, with the top chaps, you didn't try that one for size bits. I mean, that sort of courage is obsolete, because the next war is going to be fought by computer programmers. See, that's what's frustrating the modern youth. You can see them any day down there in amusement arcades, you know, they're doing their national service on the space invaders. <laughs> Yeah, but that sort, of, that sort of real war that I'm talking about, you know, Errol Flynn leading the galleon 600 into the Valley of Death. John Mills marooned in a dinghy. It's Kenneth Moore refusing to let a little thing like no legs get him down. <laughs> Glorious, valiant war, that. Don't talk like a burp, Dale. Do what? What do you know about it anyway? The only war you ever fought is the inch war. Right? Eh? No, I've seen all the films, and I? Uh, tomato sauce and stuntmen. I'm talking about the real thing. I remember when I was a little nipper and I saw the soldiers marching off to battle. Oh, yes. It was a glorious sight, all right. Yeah, I bet all them spears and chariots must have stirred the blood, wasn't it? <laughs> Just hear him out, will we? Yeah, all right, all right. My brother George was at Passchendaele. And half a million Allied troops died there. All for five miles of mud. I was at King's Cross Station when his regiment come home after the armistice. Most of them was carried off the train. I saw men with limbs missing, blind men, men who couldn't breathe properly because their lungs had been shot to bits by mustard gas. While the nation celebrated, they was hidden away in big grey buildings far from the public gaze. I mean, courage like that could put you right off your victory dinner, couldn't it? They promised us homes fit for heroes. They give us heroes fit for homes. I'd, I'd never wear a, a British uniform on principle. What principle? Well, on the principle that the Russians might shoot at it. <laughs> the politicians, the politicians and the military men used to con, you see. They had little lads, youngsters, believing that their country really did need them. Do you know, they used to have little lads of 14 pretending they was 18, just so they could fight for their king and country. Well, they accepted the little sprogs. More often than not. My brother George lied about his age. Pretended he was 18? No, he was 18. He pretended he was 14. <laughs>